Awesome, 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 awesome. It's another beautiful day here at Impact Masters Media. And we're still covering tech ecosystem in Africa. And today we have an interesting guest, one of the guy who is building amazing solutions. When you talk about fintech, he has done it all for over a couple of years now. And today we have one and only Bernard Banta. Welcome, Bernard. Welcome, Bernard. Welcome, welcome. welcome. Thank welcome. you, thank you. Thank How you. are you today? I'm good. Thank you, thank you, MK, for uh, inviting me here. Yes. Um, it's one of your early podcasts. Uh, yes, absolutely. And uh, what we're trying to do here is uh, tell the story the way it is uh-huh. and uh, ensure that uh, we pass on the knowledge, uh, we disseminate the knowledge and know who are the shakers and movers when it comes to innovation and especially tech uh, because as you know africa has come a long way a long long way uh, in ensuring that uh, we are innovating Very true. we have a seat on the table and we can't talk about this because i've known you for some time now mm-hmm. and you're one guy who really is passionate about building innovations that can actually impact life yeah. but before we go to that um I would like to know who is Bernard Banta. Who is Bernard Banta? Um, I'll say I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur and uh, also a software engineer at heart. Mm. I'm also a father to uh, two daughters. Okay. One son. Oh. One husband. Ah, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Ah, nice, nice, nice. Uh huh. Yeah. So. Uh, my passion is in entrepreneurship, something I've always wanted to do for many years, mm. all the way since high school. Mm. Yeah, always wanted to build a successful company, mm. and uh, we're on the right track. Audit, so audit. So uh, let's not uh, jump the gun here and uh, talk about you know entrepreneurship. But, uh, where did you start? Like, you know, where did this Bernard Banter start from? My story, my story is very long. Yes, please. Uh, but um, you have all the time. <laughs> just, uh, just make it short. Okay. Uh, because uh, I'm sure we are going to do many pod- podcasts after yes. this. Yes. I'm going to detail about different stories. Mm. But um, I, I've always wanted to. I'll say it started uh, since uh, like uh, childhood. Mm-hmm. I loved electronics. Yes. And. Um, from like primary school, I used to repair electronics for neighbors. Okay. To make money. Ah, it. nice. So nice. people will bring um, DVDs, they'll bring iron boxes. Mm. I would repair that for them. Mm-hmm. And I'll get something in return, maybe 200 shillings, mm. uh, 500 shillings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I really used to like that. Mm-hmm. And I knew one day I was going to start something. Yes. I, I didn't know how. Yes, yes. Then fast forward um, to high school, I went into like a remote high school. I didn't know about uh, computer. Let's. Uh, le- <laughs> <laughs> Where were you born, Banda? Where were you born? I was born in Nakuru. Yes. It's uh, in Rift Valley in Kenya. Yes. And then in 1992, so. That time we used to live in a place called North Summit. Mm. And then uh, clashes happened in 1992. Exactly. Ah, so you guys experienced the Mao Summit uh, clashes? Yeah, yeah, I did. But that time so was were they uh, called Mao Summit or Molo, Molo clashes? I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. But, but it uh, was really bad in 1992 because that's bad. when the uh, multi party scene. Democracy was really heated. People wanted uh, multi-party after some law was passed for just yeah. having one party, which was Kanu. Yeah. Ah, and, and these actually advises like um, because now in the electioneering period, uh, guys, true. when we listen to these, we are just three days to the general election in 2022. Yeah. So uh, this is really important to understand this because most people are scared, yeah. uh, especially from Rift Valley. Uh, here Kisumu also is one of the hot spots among many other places uh, yeah. that these things have been happening in the past. Yeah, also, yeah. also Rift Valley. Um, yeah. Things 
if you hear stories uh, of people living there it's it's like a, it's like horror movie ah yeah people abandon their houses you carry did you uh, guys get evicted yeah but um i don't know much about that time but i was told it's it was very worse mm-hmm. it was very bad <laughs> and um we had uh, to be dressed that time i think maybe i was um I don't know maybe like four years I'm not sure. Oh. It was 1992. Yeah. You're, you're pretty I think, young. I think I was uh, maybe three, four years there. Three to four years, yeah. Yeah. So and it was so bad to a point where the community of the tribe that didn't like us. Mm. Uh, they were going home to home and uh, they were looking for young boys because what they did mm. was very bad. Mm. They were afraid that uh uh for any like uh, male kids when they grow up maybe they're going to revenge so mm. they were looking for the boys so it was like that story in the bible where <laughs> yeah. male children were killed in uh, i think it was moses uh, exodus yeah. um so it was okay so which tribe was being attacked uh, majorly i would say the tribe uh, from central which is kikuyu mm. and you know like rift valley is um, there's always conflict whenever there are mm. politics or elections or Uh, any like political conflicts or something like that mm. so it's mostly between the the kalenjins and the kikuyu so, yeah. yeah yeah so it, uh, it it must be have been sad for you as a young i can imagine three, four years you are you are you are quite scary when it comes to such a situation where Yeah, it was you very don't know scary. what is happening and why people are being killed. Yeah, but I, I also don't remember much about that time. Mm. Those were stories. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so these were stories given these to you. These were stories. Like, by your bigger brother. Yeah, you know, being three years, four years. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just I, I don't I don't have the memories. <laughs> you're breastfeeding or something. No, yeah. three, three years, you should be breastfeeding, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, so... I don't remember much or maybe almost uh, everything. Yeah. So I was just told by my parents mm. and we had to be dressed um like in like real dresses just like girls so that Ah yeah yeah yeah. yeah. So that when they come and they look they'll see there's no boy. Uh, yeah, there are no boys here. Ah yeah yeah. That that must be crazy. Yeah. And uh, my father that time um he was in coast. Mm. Um in Lamu. Mm. So he used to work there and uh, my mother and all of us were in uh, Bosamit. So there was no male figure to protect you guys or fight for you. They were. Yeah. But since my dad was away, he thought uh, why uh, should my family suffer and I can bring them here. Mm. That's how he moved from Bosamit mm. to Coast. Yeah because me when I knew you you are you I knew these guys are Costarian in Nini. Uh, and I never knew this back story. So though, though later on I knew that you have some relatives, strong relatives in Mount Summit. Yeah. And uh, I knew you also used to live there with your grandparents at yeah, some yeah, point. Yeah. That's the only part I knew. I never knew 1992 actually found you in Mount Summit and that's why you guys had to relocate to Yeah. In to fact that, 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 yeah. that was a major reason. Like mm. if, we, if um without the 1992 clashes mm. would have been We would grow there yeah would have been like have grown there my mm. whole life mm. as a proper shags guy ah yeah. nice nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's quite interesting yeah. um so you guys moved to lamu or mombasa so we moved to uh, lamu briefly and then went to uh, a place called maclon road oh yeah and then after a few years my dad settled there in maclon in maclon Bought ah. land, build houses. So you guys schooled in Macnon? Yeah, schooled in Macnon. Nursery school to yes, yes. Or? Nursery school all the way to class seven, eight there. How was that experience? Uh, it was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, so most of the time I like to say that uh, I skipped primary school because I wasn't uh, really... Uh, focus <laughs> you guy you you on vacation on, on vacation primary th- school throughout throughout and, and getting in trouble as much as you could yes yes <laughs> what kind of trouble do you remember uh, many things many things ah. uh, many many things uh, and also many bad things mm. 
<laughs> it's okay. What yeah. are those many? Because so, I know there are young guys who are in primary school. Yeah. And they might be getting in trouble a lot mm-hmm. and and I'm saying this because I have ever been so much trouble. Mm-hmm. And you think, "Ah, oh, man, mm-hmm. I'm the I'm the, you know, the guy who is mm-hmm. always on the bad side of things. Will I ever make it in life?" Yeah. But when I look at you, I think most of those experiences shaped you to who you are. Yeah, very, very true. Yeah. I think I liked uh, playing mm. so much, mm. like more than education. Mm. I think my goal in primary school was just to have fun. So you're just another child. If I could avoid studying. In fact, there was a point where just all my... Because um, I was very smart. Mm. Uh, whenever I like get serious or maybe I get someone strict mm. to just make sure I study, mm. I would be like top three. Mm. Then when that person who is strict like my uncle mm. went away, I went back to my Your position. Default which, uh, settings. 2030. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And uh, my mother was worried and said, eh, I need to look for a tuition teacher ah. to, uh, to have extra classes so that I can pass. Yes. So she paid for that. Mm-hmm. And then I found a way of not going. So you, I'll go there m- after 4. Mm-hmm. Um, 4 p.m. after classes. Mm. And then go home, change, carry my books. Mm. And then on my way to the teacher, I hide my books. Mm. And then go play football. Mm. And then in the evening, uh, maybe at around six, closer to seven there, take the books, mm. go back home. Mm. So that went on for months. Mm. Then my mother sad- one day realized, hey, my boy has not been going to the tuition classes or maybe the extra tuition classes. That was over the holiday and evenings? Also during the school uh, while we were still in session. Ah, so, so after, after, four, after, after four, four, you just yeah, go to the tuition. So we okay. finish uh, the classes at four. Yes. And then rush home, change, mm. check the books, okay. go to the, to the teacher to do the extra tuition classes. But for you, you could just go and then play. And she found out. Ah. Uh, she was uh, very mad about it. Uh-huh. And she asked me, yeah, don't you want to go back to school? I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you when you are? You, you sounded like you're too confident about playing. Very confident. How old are you? Very confident. <laughs> you knew what you wanted. <laughs> All I wanted was to, to play. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So I told my mom I don't want to go to school again. Mm-hmm. She, she said, okay. Mm. So from tomorrow, no school. And then I was so By happy. How old, are, how old are you or which class were you in? Maybe that was class three, four there. Oh. Yeah, class three, four there. Okay. Yeah. So, so you're like 10, 11 years old. I think so. So that was uh, around 4 p.m. Mm-hmm. at uh, school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I went to the field and enjoyed myself. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you had a good time. I had a good time. I was telling everyone. Me, yeah, I'm not going study. to school anymore. Life is going to be just... I'll have, be here, guys. Yeah, having fun. After school, you'll find me here. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> then went back home uh, at around seven. Yes. And then started having second thoughts. <laughs> this, is, this is too real. <laughs> to now there's true. too much time for you. Yeah, too... Uh, yeah. <laughs> too good to be true. <laughs> mm. Too good to be true. Yeah. So went home. Did your mom ask you like, did you enjoy the playing because this is what you wanted, or how, how was that conversation? Ah, she was very nice. Was ah, very nice. okay, she okay. Ah. I think it was my favorite cooking for the play. playboy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. She fed me really well. Uh-huh. Told me, ah, my son, go take shower. Mm. Go to bed. Mm. Have a long. <laughs> <laughs> the senior. You have a long day tomorrow. <laughs> the manager. <laughs> The CEO himself. <laughs> have a long, a long of day playing. tomorrow yeah. of playing. Yeah. yeah. So, then, but then started having second thoughts and say, yeah, hmm. it doesn't seem right. Something is fishy here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, just as and to take an extra caution, I decided to put my, you know, the mosquito net. Mm. Make sure, like that was like defense mechanism. Defense mechanism to mm. delay. Mm. Delay any or to detect any intruders. 
Yeah. Uh, the, uh, is it called the Dada or how do they say it? Yeah. So the wee hours of the night. Yeah. Went to bed early. Mm-hmm. So when started uh, now getting the getting sleep mm. after like one hour. Mm. Then it was uh, intact. Allah. Very fast. Allah. <laughs> and the reality hit you. The, yeah, the reality hit me. Uh. <laughs> and who, you knew who is your mother and who is who is the son in the house and who is the mother in the house yeah the following morning mm. i wake up very early mm. went to school so the conversation at night was really serious it was not a conversation <laughs> <laughs> did you get the beating or C- C- serious other? beating that a beating that african mom beating yeah mm. and that idea of not going to school never crossed my mind again <laughs> it was just the way by <laughs> <laughs> yeah and since that day you knew school is one of the key roles that you have at that age uh, not really mm. i still i continued having fun mm. yeah. but uh the thought of um, like me stopping so i knew this is something there is no way you're not going to school Yeah. So but I continue with the school. I had fun. Mm. For me like grades. Mm. Never mattered. So you were just in as school to satisfy as I'm able to, to be promoted to the next class that's yeah. what mattered. You did enough. Yeah, enough. So if I could get like a and, and what do you think about it now that you are at least a, a father, right? Mm-hmm. What do you think used to like what used to push you to to like you know just be in school and not be serious about it or work hard you just want to be a kid having fun or you didn't understand why should you be in school or i think i don't regret it mm. i don't regret it but what pushed you to be just be in school because you're just being in school because otherwise if you go at home you'll get a beating what pushed me to go to school is my parents so y- because uh, as i told you uh. i got to a point where it was okay for me to stop going to school <laughs> and you're confident that I, the school is not one thing you need yes uh-huh. yeah so i think for me what really mattered was just to have fun mm. as a child and it's the same thing i want my kids to uh, to experience to Be just a have kid yeah, enjoy just, just have being a kid yeah. fully yes and how will they get the knowledge or how do you think the knowledge should be shared so for me incorporate education into that what fun. They, yeah in their so day to day life education should be the same thing like education sh- uh, should not be serious mm. yeah so if you can incorporate uh, like learning into games mm. um like different games like because there is learning like you can learn in so many ways mm. so when a child is life itself is a le- it's a big lesson yeah mm. when a child is enjoying cooking or mm. baking mm. you incorporate education there and mm. it can be the child can learn measurements so if you are if it takes you an hour to cook a cake mm. uh, when you are teaching your ch- child or maybe you are cooking with them mm. make it uh, last as long as they enjoy maybe like three hours mm. yeah and then you learn about uh, measurements you learn about grams you learn about so many things you learn about chemistry mm. so for me education for kids should be that way kids mm. should have fun yes and nowadays um, it's so serious kids wake up at five by evening they're tired they mm. don't get time to play mm. yeah so they are, and now for me, by the way it's um, does not look good at all. Mm. Yeah. And do you think now that with the new curriculum CBC is it addressing that because there is so much hands on in their day to day activities? Are they trying to incorporate that? It's an improvement. Mm. It's an improvement. But not yet there. And not yet there. I feel maybe there is more that can be done. Mm. Uh, especially training teachers making sure there are available resources in classes mm. yeah because also the teachers are also figuring it out but um, it's it's a very big improvement we mm. are heading in the right direction from the previous uh, curriculum yeah 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 so you survived that kind of you know life until you are you are done with primary school or did you change at some point i survived mm. 
Yeah, but I got uh, very low grades <laughs> after after <laughs> after primary. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not funny, but it's a, you make it sound funny because you're playing out here. You're not serious, and then of course you don't get good grades. Um, so you didn't get to be called in a good school, high school, that is. Was I really called? I'm not sure. So There was no letter for you? I think I got a, le- a letter from um, from a remote school somewhere in Embu. Ah, yeah. like uh, local schools? Uh, local school. Uh-huh. Uh, that will take the students with the kind of marks I had. Ah. Yeah, so... And there's no way I could go to that school. I think it was very remote. It was very far. Mm. I'm not sure whether it was boarding or day school. Mm. It's, it's not really, yeah, I don't remember clearly. Mm. Yeah, so my dad told me, you need to repeat. Ah, class eight now. Yeah, because clearly there's no way you're going. With these marks? Yeah, with these marks. And wh- what what was going through your mind then? There's no way I can repeat. So, so repeating what, was not an option. Yeah. So losing like time, mm. you can't spend an entire year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just need to, to go to the next step. Which is? To go to high school. And <laughs> at some point, it dawned on me that education is important. <laughs> 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 so Because now, I tried now to figure out... Uh, What am I really doing? With Because your your colleagues also are being invited in these you know provincial school, national schools, and yeah. you're here now. You are out of options. So I started thinking about my future mm. because I loved entrepreneurship. I loved engineering. Mm. You electronics. started doing these electronics while you're in primary school, or in primary school? Which class? Maybe class four there. Going ah, okay. I'll make so many things uh, repair. And you'd get some extra cash. Yes, yes. Mm. Yeah, not so much, but uh, enough to motivate me. Yes, yes. Yeah, getting like 50 shillings. Ah, that's a lot of money uh, back in the days. That, that was really... For a kid, good. because yeah. everything is provided for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and also, I was also really good um, uh, with painting. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, I remember that part when we spent some time together. Yes. Yeah, I was really good. Mm. Um, like, my mother was in a number of chamas. Mm. So, we go to... Like these government uh, exhibitions, mm. um, so they make like um, different paintings mm-hmm. and create uh, different uh, like arts. Mm. So they will pay me to do that job, and then when they go present um, at the show ground, mm. uh, most of the time they won. Ah, did they uh, did they get some some resources out of that? Yes, yes. And did these resources get to you or? You're too little yeah, to I, get I was paid. any cut. I was paid. After or before? Uh, before. Ah. Yeah, so for me, I... So if they lost, uh, that's not up to you. I've done my job. Uh, <laughs> you need to pay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> ah, nice. So that's that's how it was. Uh. Yeah, so um, I didn't want to repeat. Mm-hmm. My father was very strict. Yes. Yeah, so... But, so it was... um. So, you know, my father was very strict and he said, there's no way you have to repeat. Mm. And, uh, he went on a journey. And he said, so that was like a law. The law was made. By the time <laughs> I come back, I need to find you in class eight. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, uh, my mother had a very hard time when my father was away. Mm. Yeah. At some point, um, I even like wanted to like uh, run away because there's no way I could go to class eight. Mm. Yeah. Study with your juniors. Yeah. So my father had to cut short his journey to come because... Take your business. Uh, things were very hot at home uh-huh. because of me. Yes. And then he came back and say, asked me, what do you want? Mm. I said, uh, I told my dad, just I can go, I just look for look for me, look for any school, high mm. school I can go to. It mm. doesn't matter whether it's good or bad. Mm. And I promised to work hard. Mm. Yeah. That was a turnaround. So oh, so you went to from one well aware that this is not a joke. I need to put in work. Yes, because um, I had dreams. Mm. If I 
want to be to achieve my dreams what dreams did you have banta at that age i would say still entrepreneurship mm. so for you but it was not very clear yes what i knew is um, business i just need to go to high school mm. uh, perform very well mm-hmm. and go to university mm. yeah but all this is just in pursuit of knowledge that can shape you to be a very successful entrepreneur yeah ah yeah so went into high school mm. uh, again very remote mm. and uh, in a place in coast called uh, Mazeras High School mm. <coughs> called Mazeras High School mm. so people are not performing very well mm. when i got into that school i had the person who was number one got uh, like c plus mm. and i was wondering if that person is getting c plus and then with that with that b b minus in in uh, i don't know was it mathematics or sciences sciences one of the sciences yes. so basically was that person was not going anywhere yes so if that was number one, mm. what is going to happen yes um, to the rest yeah about my future mm. so i really wanted to go to another good school mm and what i told my dad is uh, i need to go to a good school people are not performing so this after spending a year two years a term how long that was within year one after mm. the second term the f- it's called form one in fact yeah form one mm. uh, the first term mm. i started um, having those uh, thoughts mm-hmm. yeah, and then my dad told me you can't say the school is underperforming and you, you yourself You're among the, the others. Yeah. So you have to be number one. <laughs> Then you there should be a very big gap between, not uh, between you and the second uh, person. Yeah. And that time I was uh, I think maybe number 30. And you're saying this school is not performing. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, so that's what my dad said. So you had to make a deal. You can't look for a good school mm. until you perform and I want to see you to be um I want to see you come number one, mm-hmm. and then again yes very big gap between you and the second uh, number two so from that point i decided that um, i have to like work very hard and i need to perform to, pa- to perform very well but i didn't know how to like how to learn how to read to become number one. and what i ended up doing was i needed to to study and to understand how do people become number one. and the best way to do that was to hang to hang around with the people who are performing students who are performing So there were big differences because when I joined I found myself in a group that was not really performing very well. So I joined the group or started hanging around with the people who were performing very well. Mm. Uh, start, I obs- started to observe them. Yes. Started to observe them uh, yes. what time they wake up in the morning, how they study. Yes. The conversation they have. So yes. Realized their conversations were very different even yes. after classes mm-hmm. uh, the other group that I was in uh, people will discuss about movies will discuss about um, like fun fun things or yes. maybe what they enjoyed uh, over the holiday yes so decided i need to observe these people and see how they they pass so you did a behavior study yeah So I observed them for a very long time. Mm-hmm. When they wake up, I wake up in the morning. Mm-hmm. When they study, I study with them. Mm-hmm. And uh, slowly, at some point, my grades started improving. And it's the same same school that was not performing really same, well. Same school. Mm-hmm. Because you I had to uh, to do what I we agreed with my dad. Mm. I have to come number one. yes and there should be a gap yes number one, number two. yes so that took time so it took time but after one year yes i be- 
became number 2 yes that was in uh, now like form 2 uh mm. and then like second term form 2 it became number 1 yes and then number 2 that the person who used to become number 1 they would come to me and ask me hey, how did you do it what's up what's up yeah how did what's you the hack like? uh mm. yeah so it became number 1 mm then went to my dad and told my dad you see now this school they're not serious 